Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new, welcome. My name is Billy. I'm a firearms instructor and uh, competitive shooter. I'm shooting with Spectrum right now in North Carolina. So if you're interested in coming train with us, there will be a link down in the description for that. But, if, well first of all, let me say if you're watching this in the future, hopefully everything's back to normal. Uh, but right now we're in the middle of the whole stay-at-home quarantine COVID-19 situation. So we're not out on the range right now. We're at home in the office. And I thought I would take this opportunity to film a video and answer some of the, the, honestly, the most common questions that I get right now are about gun belts. So whether you want to call them gun belts, war belts, battle belts, whatever the case may be, um, I get questions about those all the time. Why do you need one? Do I need one to come take a class with you guys? Um, do I need one for home defense, range use, competition use? Which one should I get? What should I have on my gun belt? Where should it go? and all these kind of questions, how to attach things, different kinds of attachment styles, so on and so forth. I'm gonna try to answer as many of those questions for you here today as I can. First of all, when I'm talking about gun belts, what I mean is a belt that goes over top of all your belt loops and holds up all of your gear, right? So think about a duty belt for military law enforcement or the kind of belt you might wear if you're a competitive shooter, so on and so forth. Do you need one of those belts? Well, if you are gonna be wearing a lot of gear strapped under your belt for instance a period of time you certainly probably want a belt a little bit different than what you might wear as a normal clothes belt just to kind of hold your pants up right you want something that's meant to be load bearing meant to meant to hold up all that stuff now certainly you could get just like a more standard um, gun belt that actually goes through your pant loop something like this this is a uh, this is a G code web belt you know it's double double layer um, scuba webbing and it's heavy stitching it's got a spine in it and it, this it does a much better job of holding up that weight and, and still remaining somewhat comfortable and, and helping with concealment, all that kind of stuff, um, than a normal belt would do. But the problem with this is if you've got the whole Batman utility belt situation going on, uh, it's going to be a real pain because you're going to have to thread this through your belt loops, put each piece of equipment on the belt every time you want to put it on, whether you're at the range whether you're carrying it open carry for a duty capacity or whether you're a competitive shooter, whatever the case may be. you got to thread each one of those things on and you're going to be a little bit limited on where you can put stuff based upon where your belt loops are, so on and so forth. And also, you're limited by the size of normal belt loops, the size of belts you can have, how thick it can be, and all that kind of stuff. So this is not going to be as good as a dedicated gun belt. So when do you really need something crazy like this? Well, um, obviously it depends a little bit on you and, and kind of what you're doing in your scenario. Um, if you're in a duty capacity where you're wearing all this gear all day every day, you already know you need one of these because it's going to be much easier to get in in the morning, throw on your belt and all of your stuff is there. It's going to be the exact same spot every single day. You're going to get used to where all that all your gear is set up. This is going to be a much more rigid, heavy-duty belt that's going to be much better suited for holding all of this gear that you might need uh, throughout your day. So you already know that you need one of these. What if you are just a civilian, you're interested in home defense, self-defense, that sort of thing, do you need one of those? Well, obviously, as civilians, the vast majority of the time, you're going to be concealed carrying, right? So that's where you want a more minimalistic belt. You don't want something like this. However, there are applications where something like this might make sense. As an example, my, one of my personal applications for this belt in particular is I leave this hung up by the D-ring uh, very, very close to me at, at night when I am in bed. And so in the event that there was a bump in the night, I can get up very, very quickly without having to worry about putting on any other pieces of clothing, anything else. I can sling this belt on and very, very quickly I now have gun, magazines, rifle mag in the event that I feel the need and have the time to grab a rifle mag. I also have a uh, good interior flood style flashlight. I have a medical kit as well over here. I live the Creed medical kit. I also have this is some spare batteries and then obviously I have a pistol in here as well. So in just a matter of seconds I have all of this gear at my disposal ready to go from a completely sort of condition, unprepared condition, if you will, um, I can get all of this gear very, very quickly. So certainly for that kind of scenario, this setup is very, very handy. And if that's something you're interested in, um, as opposed to a plate carrier or just having 
you know, a gun and a light and a holster and medical, you know, staged in a drawer or something. This is very convenient for that. The other thing that I'll just address quickly is if you are a real shooter and you're going to the range every week, multiple times a week, whatever the case may be, you're, you're going to, you know, multiple day classes, right? There's, I know guys out there that are going to five day, all day classes. And you know what? Something like this is not only going to be more convenient, it's going to be more comfortable. It's going to allow you to, you know, hold up all this weight over all day, every day periods of time. Um, and it's just going to be better suited for that kind of thing. So if you need one, you need one. If you don't need one and you still want one to look cool, rock out. As far as using these in classes, we do certainly recommend that if you are trying to get better at, for instance, drawing from concealment, well then when you come to the class, run your concealment gear to get reps from there, right? At a certain point, one of the main things you're showing up to the range for is not necessarily to just get better at concealment draws and you can worry about other things and, and what kind of belt and holster you're wearing may not matter so much. You know, a lot of the mechanics of the draw are going to remain the same as far as where your hands are coming together, presentation and all that, whether it's from open or concealed. The only real difference is clearing the garment and exactly where the holster is located. Other than that, for the most part, it's going to remain largely the same. So up to you, if you want to come into a class, which one you want to run. But you, if you come to one of our classes, you certainly can run a belt like this. You certainly could run an open holster just attached to a normal belt or a gun belt like this one. Or you can run a concealment rig. Whatever works for you, whatever you have is totally acceptable in a class. Let's talk about the different kinds of belts and why you might want to consider one over another. So this particular one I have on right now, actually both of the ones that I'll show you guys here today are inner outer belt systems. What do you mean by that? Well, you can see on the inside of this belt is is, is the Velcro, the hook style, uh, the side of the of the Velcro goes on the entire interior of the belt. And then I'm wearing an inner belt, right? So there is loop Velcro on this belt that goes through all of the belt loops. And so when I put this belt on, it binds to the inner belt and keeps it from moving around, keeps it exactly the same place every time, and it keeps it exactly where I know where everything is. I really prefer this system. There is another system that's basically a padded belt system, um, which is a large sort of somewhat sticky pad, if you will, that goes underneath of the web belt, and that just goes over top of your no normal belt and so forth. And those are great, I feel like, especially in winter months where you have heavier style clothing, maybe you have hoodies on, maybe you have jackets on, you need to be able to put your gun belt on over multiple layers of clothing. This isn't going to work because your under belt isn't necessarily exposed to where this belt could bind to it. And if I do, you know, clear the garment and bind the belt to it, and then I let go, a lot of times the jackets and so forth will fall over top of all your gear and make it more difficult to efficiently access those pieces of gear. So that's, a, that's an excellent style, especially if you live in a colder climate where you're dressing that way more consistently. For me, the vast majority of the time, this is the style belt that I'm gonna go with. Now, I wanna show you two different kinds of belts in detail today. One is gonna be for more tactical style use, and the other one's gonna be for competition use. And I'll talk about the differences between those and why I like each of those belts. So first of all, this is one of my favorite tactical belts. This one is from Blue Alpha Gear. Now, there's multiple um, companies that make belts like this that are fairly similar. Um, RDR Gear, Ronin, um, and Blue Alpha Gear are, are some of the main ones that I really, really like. A couple things you're really gonna wanna pay attention to. Obviously, the buckle, this is a quick release buckle that I like a lot um, because it's easy to get this on and off. But one of the big things you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that when it binds up, there's not a ton of give. This one has a little bit, but it's not too excessive. Some of them really lets you bend a lot. And if this webbing isn't stiff enough, it will bend additionally as well. And that's gonna give you a lot of give and sag in your gear up front. But the main thing, the other feature this has is the, uh, the D-ring. Some of these don't allow you to come with that. I like a D-ring, honestly, you know if you need one for tethering in helicopters and so forth. But honestly, it's really super convenient to let you hang the belt up if you want to do that as well. Um, but the main feature of this, let's see if I can find a spot that's kind of open, is there's two layers of molly webbing on the top and bottom of this belt. So that's really convenient if you have a piece of gear like this Live the Creed medical kit 
that's designed to be compatible with Molly, you can use these, um, these are the Mac Edition sort of Molly clips, right? That run through the Molly webbing on the back of the kit and then interface with the belt. It's a really great way to attach items like that to your belt. I've also got the Theorem cell vault attached through the Molly as well. There's other pieces of gear like the Safari Land UBL that I can just use regular belt loops with with this system, or there's pieces of gear like these T-Rex Arms uh, Mars pouches that I can interface tech lock with and attach that way. You'll notice I have little pieces of Velcro as well on the inside of my tech lock just to help pick up on that binding again and not allow those attachments to basically take away all of the stickiness of the Velcro. Now, why do I like Blue Alpha gear? I gotta be honest, one of the main things for me that sets Blue Alpha gear apart from any of the other belt systems out there is the inner belt. So I'm wearing their inner belt here. And one of the things that's really different from this belt from any other inner belt system that I've seen before is that it actually has this buckle, right? So it has a buckle in the belt that allows you to tighten it exactly the way you want it and then close it. The vast majority of inner belts out there and Blue Alpha Gear has these as well, but they also have this one. This one's called the EDC Hybrid. This one is a typical inner belt system. And simply the way this works is it has loop Velcro on the outside, and then here on the inside, it's got a little piece of, of a hook. And so literally, when you put this on, you wrap it around, obviously you thread it through your belt loops, and then it just overlaps, right, and binds that way. So the problem with this is it's very difficult to get it exactly the right tightness that you want. You kind of have to hold it and then pull, and you're like, I think that's about right, and uh, bam, hopefully that's about right, and you're like, I don't think that's about right, but now I can't adjust it, right? You can't micro-adjust it. That may not sound like a big deal, but it obviously it's very nice to have your belt exactly the tightness you want. It's also very important, though, for a proper binding with your outer belt. Obviously, the size of your outer belt doesn't change, but how tight your inner belt is essentially changes the circumference of your waistline. And so if it is a little bit too big, it's gonna be very difficult to close um, the cover buckle on your outer belt. And if it's too small, it's gonna flop around and not bind correctly. So it's very important to be able to get a properly sized inner belt. And the Blue Alpha Gear inner belt is really, really good for that. Additionally, this is a great everyday belt. Um, I really like this for a concealed carry as well. Um, the clips interface with this belt very well. It's somewhat minimalistic. It's not a huge, thick belt, so the clips run very well, but it's also rigid enough that it really supports the clips, has positive engagement, and works really well for everyday carry. So, um, that's a little bit of an overview on this belt. Now, let's talk about the kind of the way I have it set up again, really briefly, why I have everything the way that it is. Um, another quick tip for you while I set this up is how do I put this on and get it exactly where I want it? The main thing that matters where it is in your body is the pistol, right? For the draw stroke on the pistol, you want your gun to be in the exact same place every time. So what I do is I start with my pistol, figure out where exactly on the body I want that, and then what you need to do is pull this tight and simply wrap it around. And then if your inner belt is sized correctly, those the, the, the buckle should close and leave you right there. Um, so the gear that I have shot on my belt right now, this is a Safari Land mid-drop UBL. And the cool thing about this is it allows me to put whatever holster on here I want. I don't have another one within arm's reach here that's really um, set up for this. But um, any hip pistol holster that you have mounted with a QLS fork on the back will mount here so I can run different guns off of this belt that I may want to run throughout the day if I want a weapon light, a different weapon light, whatever the case may be. I can swap holsters out and run those. I like mine a little bit forward of sort of the hip line, a more forward than some people might run it. Um, I have videos in the draw stroke and why that's helpful. Let's talk about pistol mag pouches. Um, these are one of the main things I get a ton of questions about because of the angles and so forth. Let me quickly say I like these T-Rex Arms Mars pouches uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, they do a really good job of allowing you to get the mags out very quickly, but also having a good amount of retention where I don't have to worry about these mags falling out for the most part. It's not as much in retention as, say, the STAT Kiwi pouches, something of that nature, um, but it, it is a really great retention uh, with still a lot of speed. The other thing I really like about the Mars pouches is they have a little bit of a lip, a sort of flared mag well, if you will, on the outside of the pouch. It makes it really easy to stow mags quickly. That's important if I'm doing tactical reloads or 
I mean, on a competition stage where I have to pick up a mag and stow it quickly, I can do that. But in a tactical scenario, you know, if I have to do a, 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 ta a, a tactical reload or reload with attention where I'm taking this mag out and you just stow it quickly, it, this is much easier situation to stow a mag than something like an SAT Kiwi or in another hybrid situation like maybe an HSDI uh, Taco that might collapse on itself a little bit. When I go to stow a mag, a lot of times you'll see people having to do this deal and force it in. Um, or if it's just a regular uh, Kydex pouch without the flared mag, well, you end up doing this deal a lot and then finally getting it, right? Whereas with the Mars pouches, without even looking, I can usually just direct the mag right back into the pouch and have no issue whatsoever. So I do like those a lot. The other thing I like is the pattern they have on the back. It's sort of a T pattern. that lets you mount these at about any angle you want. Like I said, I have these mounted on Tech Lock right now, which works really, really well. The reason I have these set up at this angle is that for my reloads, you look at sort of the angle of my wrist when the mag is going into the gun i basically try to retain this angle in my wrist the entire time throughout the reloading process and what you'll notice is that if i had these vertical up here in the front i'd basically have to go like this to get to my magazine and that's not only really uncomfortable but it's unnatural and it's not going to be quite as quick and it requires a lot of your wrist articulation to flip this magazine around so what I want to do, again, sticking with a nice strong wrist angle, is keep it that way. So when I'm up here in the front, this is kind of the proper angle. As I start going around, you'll notice the angle changes more and more and more until it basically becomes appropriate for the mags to be vertical back here. And as I come back more towards the front, that angle changes to more of a slope, which is why I have this mag pouch at the angle that it is. So when I'm going for a reload, it's very natural to just come straight down grab this magazine and come straight up into the mag well. So that's why I have these at an angle, and that's why the angle changes as it goes around. As we get back here, this is a pretty cool setup. This is from G-Code as well, and this is a double stack system. So I'm able to have an AR mag pouch back here, as well as two pistol mag uh, pouches mounted on top of that back here. So this gives me extra utility for the same real estate on the belt. You'll notice that up here I have um, bigger mags. These are the 21 round P mags. I don't run those back here. And the reason for that is that if I put a 20 round, run, round mag, it makes it a little bit difficult to get a full grip on the mag. I'm left with just kind of, you know, two fingers worth on the mag there, which isn't as much as I like to have. So if I go instead with the 17 round mags back here in these pouches, it allows me to get a much more full grip on that rifle mag, which I like a lot. This is the T-Rex Arms dump pouch. There's several out there like it. I like the T-Rex Arms one a lot because it, it folds and stows up like that. Also, when it deploys, it has a leg retention strap, which keeps it in place. If you're running you know, heavy stuff back there, like a big Gatorade bottle or something, and you're running around, it keeps it from plopping around all over the place. This is the Live the Creed uh, medical pouch right here. I really like this for quick access to a tourniquet, as well as it being really low profile so that when I'm sitting in a vehicle or something of that nature, I don't have a huge IFAC protruding off my you know, belt. This makes it really uncomfortable or impractical to sit in a vehicle for long periods. This is one of the lowest profile IFACs that I've found that still holds all of the kind of key TCCC, if you will, items that you really need. Then I have a Theorem Cell Vault. I like to have batteries with me to make sure that I have what I need. The bottom line is that a lot of our high output lights now, you know, things like, um, you know, mod light, uh, you know, handheld, or even your rifle lights, right, that will all run, for the most part, the same lights, but they're very, very high output, and they burn through those rechargeable batteries very, very quickly. So I like to have enough batteries with me that I can run my everything, all the lights I have on me, I can run them for a long time, several hours uh, if I need to. So what I have basically in this theorem, double serum theorem cell vault is two of the 18650 rechargeable batteries, two CR123s, and I've also got a uh, one of the watch batteries for an RMR or an optic or whatever. I need. All right, one of my red dot on my uh, red dot on my rifle, whatever I need to put in there, I have those batteries with me on my person. And then, of course, I have my pistol over here, which you've already talked about. Enough about this belt. If you have any questions about the Blue Alpha Gear belt or tactical belts in general, different pieces of kit, let me know. I've got a ton of stuff that I've gone through that I've tried that's good for certain situations. This is set up specifically for me. So if you have other questions, 
let me know. This is my competition belt, and it's been set up a little bit differently. Um, one of the main reasons it's set up differently is to comply with a lot of the rules that we have to deal with in competition, so this one's set up for carry optics. Um, but I thought I would explain this system a little bit. This is actually a Safari Land belt, and this is their ELS system. So one of the really cool things about this belt, obviously it's the same setup that we talked about. It has the, the hook Velcro on the inside, but it's also built with all these holes throughout the belt, and you can either use you know regular belt loops like I have set up with my hanger, or for their mag pouches, um, these are ELS mag pouches, they mount just with screws through the belt, and that's fantastic because these are permanently installed, if you will. They're not going to go anywhere. They are locked in place. There's there's no shift in that mounting position whatsoever, and it doesn't really take away from your Velcro binding, which is pretty cool. I'll talk about what I have on the belt here in a second, but I just want to point out this belt from Safari Land is extremely rigid, which I really like. Um, even with all this loadout, right, I can hold it out from one side, and the belt does not start to collapse at all. It basically retains its own shape. It's one of the key things you look for in a nice, really rigid, weight-bearing belt. Um, this is hard to show you when I'm actually taking it on and off. So the, the attachment on this is a little bit different. It's not quite as convenient as the buckle system. Um, so what it is is you, you tuck this end under the loop, and there's these two posts that pop through. There's also a piece of Velcro in here, and that's how it retains. So let me put this on really quick, and I'll explain what I have and why all that is set up the way that it is. All right, so as far as the holster goes, I have to keep this holster a little bit farther back, a little bit closer to center line, again, due to the competition rules and regulations. I have this holster actually mounted on a boss hanger from the Ben Steger Pro Shop. The reason I have that is this is an adjustable height um, hanger. So with my tactical belt, the mid-drop EBL, that's kind of fixed, a fixed amount of drop, which I like that drop a lot. It's just a smidge too low for this holster that I'm running for my OZ-9 uh, for competition. So this is the Red Hill tactical uh, holster for the OZ-9, which works really, really well. And then this is, again, the boss hanger from Ben Steger Pro Shop. Over here, I have T-Rex Arms mag pouches as well. They start a little bit farther back, again, due to competition rules, but they have the same idea with the angles on all of these mag pouches. So starting off here, it's at a more slanted angle. As it comes back around to the back, eventually it starts to get more vertical so that as I draw, you know, it's at a natural position from all of those different angles. Again, these are the T-Rex Arms uh, Mars pouches, if I didn't say that already. Anyway, guys, that's a little bit of information about the belts that I run and kind of why I like those particular belts. Again, if you have any additional questions about gun belts, war belts, you know, tat <laughs> battle belts, whatever you want to call them, um, feel free to shoot me a message. You can leave a comment down below. I try to get as many, as many YouTube comments as possible. If you really need to get a hold of me, Instagram is a great P3 underscore tactical. You can shoot me a DM, and I do get back to pretty much all of my DMs as much as I possibly can. So let me know if you have any questions or anything else that I can do for you guys. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.